So this video is going to be on pillowing ebony pegs. Uh, if you've read my uh, books, saw previous videos, taken a class from me, uh, you're familiar with this jig. Uh, if not, and you want to use this jig, and there's enough requests, I will make it a PDF download from my website free. Uh, just contact me and let me know. Anyway, um, I don't use this jig as much anymore. I find that I get a slightly flatter, slightly more low profile pillow by doing it by hand, but this one still produces perfectly acceptable uh, ebony pegs. Um, if you're doing a lot of stuff, if you're doing a dining set, uh, you could have hundreds of pegs to do, and this will efficiently get them done and do a good job of it. Uh, I could do, I can take an ebony peg, I can take it from the uh, rod form like this to uh, um, finished peg uh, 99 per hour. That's back beveled and ready for insertion. Uh, but this jig is uh, a bit misunderstood, so I want to go over its use and clear up some of those uh, misunderstandings. First of all, the way it works is the rod, I'm, this is a quarter inch rod, I'm putting it in the half inch hole just for illustration purposes here. You can see it's, it's making contact down here on this side and up here on this side. So it's making contact on two points and then it's twirling. So, uh, the other thing is, let's put it in the quarter inch hole there. Um, there's a tendency to act like it's a pencil sharpener. And a pencil sharpener, you just keep shoving it in. Uh, and if you do that with this, you'll get a bevel. And you won't get an even uh, rounding on the top there. So let's go ahead and do one. And I'll show you how it's done. It's very simple. First, you start with, we're going to just do that to kind of make sure we start with a good flat uh, square edge. And that's all there is to it. It's very simple. Um, you notice the um, rod on the left with the uh, white mark, that uh, uh, is just squared off. The one on the right is the one that I just did in the uh, jig. And you can see how subtle, how, how small the difference is. But that I'm after just a small flat um, uh, pillow. So, uh, but this just, this does speed up the process. So, uh, let's go ahead and do an ebony peg by hand uh, now. Uh, the process using the jig from this point on is the same as doing it by hand, except doing it by hand, I drop down to a coarser grit. Uh, to start with, though, I'm going to go ahead and again square, I, want, I need to start with a, 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 a flat square edge. So let's head over to the uh, sanding pads. If you noticed, I have uh, this soft pad here. Uh, you need a little cushion to do the sanding on. Uh, this is nothing more than ordinary shelf liner you can get at a hardware store. But anything soft uh, will work, a mouse pad, anything, to give it a little bit of cushion. Uh, now doing it by hand, I'm starting out at 150. 220, 320, and then 600. You can see I've got an air filter right here, air cleaner. Uh, this ebony dust is nasty stuff. Uh, so I, I kind of try to keep the air clean by doing this right, uh, uh, right next to the air cleaner. Nice little station here, keeps it clean. Now this is a very, very simple process. Uh, but I've seen people get hung up on it. What we're after is to just a slow, shallow arc. What I've seen is people get too far out and they start back here and they end over here. What that's going to do is that's going to round 
those edges over, and that's not what we're after. We're after something more shallow. The other problem I've seen is going too light or too heavy. It's about one or two pounds of pressure, and it's a very shallow arc, just like this. And um, this is uh, a quarter inch um, rod. I'm going to do about four to five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn it 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if this is a, like a three eighths or a half inch, you're going to probably have to do uh, uh, more right here. You know, maybe five or six. But what we're after is we're after just kind of smoothing out the surface there. Let me get a closer look at that. The rod on the left is, is the one the, with the white mark, is the one right off the uh, disc sander, just squared up, but it has sanding marks in it, and it's, um, it's just dead flat. The one on the right is the one I just did, and it is, it's very subtle, but it's even, no sanding marks, no uh, 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 straight lines from the disc sander. Uh, and it's just slightly, slightly pillowed, just ever so slightly. That's what we're after to start with. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this guy off with our remaining grits. Uh, that first one uh, was only meant to get things started, and we needed to do a little more shaping on that first one. This one just takes out the uh, sanding marks from the 150. So this time I'm just going to do three repetitions on each. So it's one, two, three, turn it 90 degrees, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So let's take a closer look at, uh, at what we have here. Just a low, even sheen on the surface after 600 grit. It's uh, ready for buffing now. Okay, I like to use white uh, jeweler's rouge for um, polishing this guy. Let's charge him up. And polish, buff. Okay, you see I've got some residue on there. If that happens, especially when you first charge it up, you get a lot of that. Uh, I just use a scotch, scotch bright pad and uh, take that off. Okay, next we've got to cut this guy to length. Um, I usually cut them about a quarter inch at the outside, maybe five sixteenths long. You just want to make sure that it's shorter than the hole that you make, than the square hole you punch out into the wood. Uh, this has got to be shorter. You don't want it to bottom out. Uh, I use a bandsaw to cut these guys, and if you do use a bandsaw on a little sled, make sure you use an eraser instead of your fingers. The eraser is a lot easier to replace than a finger. Uh, but, you know, any method you have for cutting them off is fine. Okay, the last step is to back bevel. Let's go back over to the bench and uh, we'll do that. Okay, the idea is to leave about a sixteenth or so of an inch flat at the top up here, bevel the rest. Now, um, it's, you don't have to be scientific about it, about the bevel, getting it perfectly even, but beware, if you do get it lopsided, when you go to pound this guy in the hole, he's going to go in at an angle and it's going to be a lot harder to, to control. So, and uh, it helps to have a sharp chisel. Um, ebony does not like being worked unless you have sharp tools. And 
there you go.